Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's episode, which is a review of Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 1, oh, I would like to say sorry for the wait. I actually forgot I scheduled the live at 3. So when I got back, I was like, oh my god, the live. So I apologize, you guys. Mea copa, mea copa, mea copa. So before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. Dun, dun, dun. So let's get into it. So first off, I would have to say I felt the first episode was flat. And I want to know what you guys think, you know, put it down below. I thought it was a bit flat. I wasn't really invested in any of the, you know, characters. I wasn't in invested in any of the storylines. And I think the biggest problem is that they spent too much time sort of recapping and explaining headlines. Like every conversation they had, it was like, so when last time I was on this couch and Sandoval said this, and oh, I'm making my own latte because no one's ever made that for made that for me before, which was like a nod to like what Tom had said to Ariana about making her lattes. Like it was too like tongue in cheek. You know, every single scene was pretty much just harking to an article. Or harking to a, like, a pre-described storyline, if you know what I mean. None of it was just these people actually living their lives, which is what I would have preferred to see. Just them living and seeing like what does the aftermath look like? What does their new normal look like? Rather than them sort of answering to every blog post or article. Like just live. I don't know if that's because it just feels very scripted now. Like everything just seemed very pre-planned, -pre pre-scripted, um, pre-plotted, pre-produced. It wasn't any authenticity. I didn't feel like these people were actually having real conversations or real events or real relationships. It all just seemed very pre-described, pre if that makes sense. Also, I felt like... You know what it is? I'm not invested anymore. Like this might sound harsh, but I'm going to be honest. Like I don't care. <laughs> like I don't care about what's going on with these people. So I don't know. So hopefully that will change. You know, hopefully as the season goes on, we will start to care more and we will be more invested. I will say that the production value and the quality was, was two of the best parts of the episode. If you notice, the production quality is way up. It's giving Miami on Peacock, you know, it's giving um, bling, you know, bling empire. I feel like the person quality, it's giving selling sunset is way up. I don't know if that's because they have a bigger budget now after Scandaval and also like more companies, like higher quality companies seem like they want to partner with them now. Like they went to that really ritzy place to get the massages where before I feel like they used to go to like you know, the bodega down the street, no offense to that, but you get what I'm saying. So the production quality seemed to be up way more. So I felt like that was good. But I kind of feel like this might be the last season because I'm not really sure where the series can go from here. And we had talked about this um, a couple of seasons ago where it seemed like season 10 was going to be the last season until Scandaval hit. Because where can these lives go? Where can these stories go? I feel like everybody on this cast, their story is kind of wrapped up within the premise of what Vanderpump Rules is. You know, if we give some people some spinoffs, sure, you know, maybe like a mommy, a young mommy spinoff or like a Lala and Sheena, you know, what does it look like being young moms raising their two daughters and all of that stuff? Maybe something like that, or I don't know. But I feel like each character on the show has aged out of the show, if that makes sense. But let's break it down a little bit more. And I really put together some of my predictions, and I'm going to go through each person and talk about what I think is really going on with them, and then I'll give predictions for the season as well. So let's start with Katie. So Katie girl, as you guys may or may not know, there is going to be a storyline that Katie and Tom Shorts are hooking up with the same girl. 
And it's sort of like the two exes are battling it out to see who's going to get the new, the the same girl. I forget what her name is. I think she's either like a bartender or a server at one of the restaurants, but both Katie and Tom Schwartz is hooking up with her. And I'm kind of like, is this the new Kyle Morgan Mauricio situation? Like, does every single, you know, series now has to have a woman who is either divorced or going through a separ- or going through a separation, and then all of a sudden they're having like a bisexual lesbian awakening? Like, what? It's giving heavily produced storyline. It's giving um Kyle and Morgan it's give it's just like stop stop number 1 <laughs> i'm it's, it's not my place to you know speculate on anybody's sexuality but i'm kind of just like it, it seems a little exploit exploitative that Katie has to be the one who takes on the bisexual role on the show because i'm not buying this for a second All of a sudden, Katie is now bisexual, and all of a sudden, now her and Tom are hooking up with the same exact girl. It's giving PR relationship. It's, and I'm gonna also tell you who's in another PR relationship, and I'm gonna break that down when um, I get to it a little bit. But there's someone who came out with a very, very PR relationship today, but we'll get into that. But it's just bizarre to me that these people really don't have anything else to talk about. And all of a sudden, now Katie is into women, but not just into women. She's into the same woman that her ex-husband, Tom Schwartz, is in. And they are going to see, Katie makes some comment, may the best man win. And it's just like, I want more for Katie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they they used to drag Katie for her, quote, weight. When, to me, Katie has never been overweight. She's been a normal, healthy person. Just because she doesn't have that stick figure, ozempic look doesn't mean that she's overweight. You know, they've dogged Katie out for her weight for years. Remember James was like, oh, we're not working on our summer bodies. Are you pregnant? And all this stuff and call it her fat. So disgusting. So gross. They've dogged her out for her body over years. She was tequila Katie when the truth was she was being cheated on, disrespected and gaslit by Tom When Katie was really just in a very unhealthy relationship. Granted, she participated in that unhealthy relationship. Of course she did. But she was also a victim of that relationship too. You see what I'm saying? But I always wanted it to be Tequila Katie. She's rage texting. Well, maybe she's rage texting her boyfriend of six years because he's cheating on her. And everybody seems to think that's okay. Katie is literally the only person who's been cheated on. And people literally act like nothing happened. Nobody ever talks about Tom Schwartz cheating on Katie. And he cheated on her when they were actually legally married. And people are just like, oh, that's just Schwartz. There was zero sympathy, zero empathy for Katie when she was cheated on. And she was an actual wife. You see? So I just want better for Katie. You know, I get it. She may not be the most likable person in the world. I actually kind of, I actually do like her. I think she's funny. I think that she speaks up for herself, but she's also an acquired taste. You know, you might like Katie, you might not like her, but I want better for her. Why does she have to get the, you know, 40 and I don't know how old she is. Let's say 35 to 40 ish, uh, divorced. Now, all of a sudden she's by. Like, can we stop? We had enough with Kyle. We had enough with Morgan. That relationship blew up in our blew up in their faces. Anyway, but also with Katie, I think there's going to be Katie versus Ariana this season as well. And I don't think that something about her is ever gonna open. I mean, is it open now? (laughs) I don't think so. You know, they can blame permits, they can blame zoning, whatever the case is. This is what I think. I think that Katie and Ariana really aren't that close of true, true friends. I think they went into business only by proxy because at the time their boyfriends slash husbands were in business. But I don't think that they have a strong enough relationship themselves to make it work. And I don't think that Ariana is committed enough to something about her now that she has 
you know, Dancing with the Stars. She's Roxy on Broadway. She, you know, on Chicago, she has all of these brand deals. She has the Lifetime movie. You know, she has so like she's blown up. She's on Late Night with Jim, Jimmy Fallon. I just don't think that Ariana is really checking for something about her now that her status has changed. Whereas I think it really has always been Katie's baby and Katie's ideas and Katie's dream. I don't know what their business plan looks like. I don't know if Katie can do it on her own. I don't know if the finances are there. I don't know. I don't know. But I predicted this before. I was like, something about her is doomed. I don't really see it ever getting off the ground. So I don't really see that happening. And I think that there's going to be the disconnect between them as well. Um, so that's what I kind of think is going on with Katie. I think she's going to be funny this season. I think she's going to be cool, but I'm not buying that she's all of a sudden a, you know, midlife bisexual who's interested in the same woman as Tom Shorts. I think that is all storyline. I think that is fake. And I think it's really trying way too hard. And Katie, you deserve better. <laughs> you really do. Okay, let's move on to Ariana. So, Oh, girl. Okay. So when we get to Ariana, I think that it's going to be also Lala versus Ariana during this season because there isn't really a true click in the sense of conflict on the show, if you know what I mean. Like we used to have like Stassi versus Kristen or, you know, something like that. Whereas they there's not really that dynamic on the show anymore, which is, again, why I think it might be the last season. Because with the current cast, sure, I think it's going to be like Katie and Ariana having a falling out over something about her and they're not really good friends. But it's not that true conflict that we think about when we think about dynamics on a TV show. You know what I mean? We don't really have that. We would have had it if um, Rachel had come back then it obviously it would have been Rachel versus Ariana versus the, the group. You know, that would have been a true conflict of two different camps. So I think that in order to create that conflict, I think that production is manufacturing it. And the way that they're going to manufacture it, it's going to be Lala versus Ariana. That's why we're getting that clip where, Ariana, where Lala's like, she's the only person on earth who's got cheated on and now became a god, you know, and all of that stuff going on. I think that is 100% um, production when it comes to pitting the two of them against each other. I think it's production. Do I think that's actually how um, Lala feels? Yes, 100%. And I actually think she's correct. And the reason why I think Lala feels that way is a couple of things. Number one, she was cheated on in a horrible way. Granted, sure, she was the mistress, the side chick, but like, but she's still a human being. And she was still villainized for it, you know? And she actually had a child. And as a, as a person who does not have children, I can still be honest with that, that there is a difference between being a person without a child leaving a relationship versus someone with a child and leaving a relationship. And like her or not, Lala does have a child with Randall. And what Randall did knocks what Tom Sandoval did out of the park. Out of the park. Tom Sandoval just hooked up with, with Rachel. And like, so like, 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 that's really all he did. Like, I'm just going to call a thing a thing. Tom Sandoval hooked up with Rachel. Okay. Okay. That sucks. Got it. Randall has multiple lawsuits. You know, he is running allegedly, allegedly running fraud schemes, you know, allegedly is abusing people, multiple people out here. You know, there might be minors like th there's layers to this where Lala literally had to flee her home with her child. And still the only thing people can say Lala is, oh, you're a home wrecking whore and all this other stuff. So I understand where Lala is coming from. She's like, look, maybe I was the side chick, but so was she, so was Ariana. Tom was in a full relationship. And she's like, I had to flee my home with my child. And I still got it wrecked from everybody. No support. You know, Tom Schwartz is out here going to pick a ball with this guy and everybody else is trying to like blame me for it. 
Ariana is in a two, three million dollar house with a man that she stopped having sex with a year ago and was in a very fake relationship in, which she even admitted herself that they were just going through the motions and that he would coach her on what to say. She said it herself at the reunion and she still gets to live in her cozy $3 million home, you know, as a single woman with no children. And if we're just being honest as human beings, I'm on La La side with this and I don't even have children. I would feel some type of way. So all of a sudden this one chick who was pretty much just like me, She's up to this like queen goddess standard, but I had to flee my home from my, you know, fiance who has lawsuits and was like allegedly abusing people and defrauding people. I had to flee my home with my child, but yet I'm still only looked at as like a home wrecker. I would feel the same way. So I do think that um, where Lala stands is understandable. And I totally get how she feels about that. Doesn't mean she's jealous of Ariana. Doesn't mean she doesn't like Ariana. I think what she's saying is, Ariana, like, humble yourself a little bit. Like, you got cheated on. We get it. <laughs> to be honest with you, the majority of people in this world have been cheated on or will be cheated on at some point. That's why so many people identified with Ariana. The difference, the mass difference why Ariana got the reaction she got is because people identified with Ariana in a way where they're like, I've been long suffering and and I've been scorned and blah, blah, blah. Where when it comes to Lala, Lala is beautiful. She has a certain type of personality. She was with Randall who had all this money and this life and this fame. So I think that when it happened to Lala, people were like, well, you got what you got, blah, blah, blah. And because they're jealous when beautiful people, because Lala is a beautiful woman, I don't care what anybody says, when beautiful people are, you know, when other people think they have a certain type of come up or they're in a certain situation where they have money or fame, when they fall from grace, the majority of people who aren't secure in themselves revel in it. They love to see a takedown, but we, but somebody that they identify with goes through something they want to rally them you know like oh ariana like the scorned woman of america you know because nobody and by nobody i mean like the collective consciousness not us because we are critical thinkers who are secure in ourselves so when people who we perceive as non-threats have something happen to them that we identify with we tend to hero worship them because we identify with them. But people that we view as threats, aka people who we think are beautiful or rich or famous or gold diggers or whatever or whatever you want to call it, when they go through a certain type of trauma, we revel in their downfall because it makes us feel better about ourselves. You see what I'm saying? So I agree with what Lala is saying on that. But I do think the reason why that and let me go to Lala now. And the reason why I think that Lala called Rachel wasn't because she wanted to, but I think because production told her to. And Lala was just doing what she was told and she wants to keep her job, you know, and wants to keep her job. Okay. Hey, Miss T, what's up? She goes, is Lala being hypocritical? She did not want anybody to talk to Randall. Is it okay for her to talk to Rachel? Yes. And I'll break down why that is, in my opinion. It's not hypocritical because it's apples to oranges. If Lala reached out to Tom Sandoval, then yes, it would be apples to apples. But she reached out to Rachel. If that would be the same as if Ariana reached out to one of Randall's side pieces. Do you see? Because in this situation, if we're saying Lala is Ariana, then Randall is Tom Sandoval and Randall's mistress would be Rachel. Also, I think it's there, in my opinion, I think that the only reason why Lala reached out to Rachel was because production told her to. It was a very scripted call. It was very like, it seemed to me, and it was also during that time when Rachel, it wasn't sure if she was going to come back or not come back. And I think production wanted her to come back. 
but they wanted her to have an ally. That's why Lala kept saying, oh, at the reunion when she said, well, if I go against Tom, then I won't have anyone. I think production is the one who picked up on her saying that, said, hey, Lala, you've been called a homewrecker. You've been called all of these things. Like, I bet you could help her out. Why don't you be the one to, to reach out the, the olive branch? Because you also notice when they were at their little girls dinner, when Lala brings up contacting Rachel, Katie's response was so like, um, I don't know what the word is. Like she already knew it. Like, oh, and she had the little like. They reached out to Rachel. I think Katie's response would have been way bigger and way different. So I'm not mad at Lala for doing that because number one, she wants to keep that she wants to to keep that check. And if production is telling her to call Rachel to see if Rachel can get back on the show and start filming, she's gonna do her job because she wants to keep her check. And number two, um, it's not the same because she didn't reach out to Sandoval. She reached out to Rachel. So I don't think that's hypocritical. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. What else? And that's a really great question, Miss T. Thank you for holding me down. And what else is going on? Okay, so let's move on to I'm gonna get to Sandoval in a second. In a second, I'll get to him. All right, James Kennedy. Boring. Ugh, boring. I don't really know what his role is going to be on the show. You know, it's sort of like him and Schwartz now are really good friends, but like they weren't ever good friends like that. He was always up Sandoval's butt. And now all of a sudden Schwartz is trying to be up James's butt because he doesn't want to continuously get blowback from being friends with Sandoval. So that's not a really organic bromance. It seems like both of them are just like, I would actually really rather be with Sandoval right now, but because I can't, I'll just hang out with you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree, Miss D. James is there for the comic relief. He's, he is funny. He is funny. Chocolate Chunks. Hey, Chocolate Chunks. Thank you for being a channel member. Says, get Allie off my screen. I could not agree with you more, Chocolate Chunks. I don't know why Allie is there. She is boring to me. She She's like a robot. I still wonder if she's a real person or is she like an AI character? Like I need to know. I'm, con I'm confused and concerned about what's going on there. So yeah, I agree. Allie is very weird. Very, very, very weird to me. Very, very weird. I agree. Well, now let's go to, okay, so James. Yeah, James is definitely there for comic relief. And then I also think James is kind of like, again, I feel like everybody on the show, their time is just up. Like James is sober now and he's, you know, he has a good DJ career. He's dating, you know, AI robot Allie. They bought their house near the airport. Like, okay, you know, like I don't really know where we're going with him and like the fake bromance with shorts when both of them really just want to be with Tom Sandoval. So we'll see how that plays into everything. Now let's go to shorts. Shorts, again, why, why are we invested in shorts? You know, like why are we caring about what happens to him? I do feel bad for him about what's going on with his family when he talks about his brother being sick and you know, having a lot of family uh, problems with like his parents. And I think his dad was either really sick too and talking all, all, all about that stuff. But what is Schwartz's storyline or arc or reason to care? And I'm not buying this whole him and Katie are hooking up with the same person. And this whole, and then the side, and then this other person, you know, crazy Joe, Kristen's crazy friend, Joe, I don't care about that either. Joe Winberg, I think her name is, she's going to make her appearance on the show. Okay. And she's just one of their weird friends who was, you know, couch surfing and hooking up with Tom Shorts. Okay. Why would I care about that either? You know, she was in on the whole Scandival thing because she was like double dating with uh, Tom Sandoval and Rachel. She was a part of that. But like, again, I don't really care. Like, who cares? You know what I mean? 
It is what it is. And he's still making excuses and not taking any accountability. So Sandoval, man, like, you know, you really threw me under the bus and you used me and blah, blah, blah. And like, I can't be associated with him anymore. It's just like, he's still not saying, I made all of these choices. I chose to pretend to be with Rachel and not give a damn about Katie's feelings and clown Katie in front of the group. You know, I chose to lie for him, you know, to Ariana and the whole group. I chose to lie to the cameras, to the world, to, you know, all of it. He's still not taking accountability for what he chose to do. Tom Sandoval can't make you do anything. These are all the decisions you made, you know? So, yeah. Sorry, one second. Yeah. So, yeah, so these are all the decisions that he made, but yet he's still not taking accountability. And, like, I don't really want to watch him on my screens. He's basically like a wet noodle. You know, he looks like he smells weird, and he looks just weird to me. He's just like a wet noodle, like a wet blanket. And, like, I don't want to watch that on my screen. Like, what is his function, if that makes any sense? And then Sheena. Oh, Sheena boo-boo. I think that... I actually think of all the people on the show. I'm not talking about Lala per se. I'm not I'm not including her in the Randall situation. But the real victim in the whole Scandaval thing, to be honest with you, was Sheena. Because I get it, Ariana, he cheated on you, but girl, enough, enough. Sheena got a whole court case. Sheena had to hire lawyers. She had to go to court. She had a whole um, uh, restraining order against her. Sheena lost half of her body mass with her stress. Sheena was the real victim of Scandaval because she was riding for her little friend, Rachel. And then she had to ride for her friend, Ariana. But yet she had to go all the way to, you know, to court. And, and she caught a case over this stuff. Sheena is the real victim, to be honest with you. The only thing that happened to Ariana was that she got a glow up. She has way more money now. Way more opportunities. You know, it's like if it's if a guy who doesn't want to be with you cheats on you and the result is what happened to Ariana, then sign me the hell up. <laughs> you know, if that's what if that's what's going to happen, if you if you're dating a deadbeat guy that was already seeing someone when you got with him and you're not happy and him cheating on you results in TV deals and book deals and movies and Broadway deals and brand deals, sign me all the way the hell up. You know what I'm saying? Like, please, the only, the true victim in this was Sheena. It was, she really was. She was being loyal to a fault to everybody. She needs to get out of that people pleasing behavior. And then that's why people say, oh, she's a flip flopper. Oh, she's this, she's that. It's not that so much that Sheena is a flip flopper. Sheena, she's very insecure and she's scared of not being accepted. And she's, a, and she's scared of being um, iced out of the group because she doesn't feel like she's good enough. And so she people pleases. But when you try to please everyone, that's when people think that you're two faced and they think you're a flip flopper because you're, because you can't please everyone. So learn how to please yourself. You know what I mean? Um, I I unfortunately predict there will be problems with her so-called marriage to Brock because I don't care what anybody says. Brock married her for a green card and he married her because he thought she had money and he married her to be on the show. Anytime you marry a fan, you're going to have a fandom marriage because Brock was a fan of the show. They try and lie and say they met at a... Uh, music festival, but the problem with the lie is you got to keep it up because it was told that Brock was watching the show from Australia or the wherever the hell he's from, the Netherlands. I don't know where he's from, wherever he's from. He was watching the show and he slid into Sheena's DMs. He was a fan of the show and he wanted to be on the show. He knew Sheena was the weakest link and that's how he got with her. So if you marry a fan, you're going to get what you get. Okay. He was a fan of the show. And then when he got with her, he was doing like his apps and his bodybuilding. And then she became, quote, an investor. So she was basically giving him money to fund his stuff. 
and then they got married and then so he get the green card to stay like girl if you marry a fan <laughs> good luck with that so i do think that um Sheena's going to be in for a, a, a wild one with him. And I think that's why she seems very, and she says it, she's on Zoloft and she's depressed and she has o, um, OCD and like, is Brock going to cheat with Lala and all this other stuff going on? I think that I personally think Brock gives Sheena hell. I think he is a nightmare. That is my gut feeling. The way he spoke about Sheena's mother when the baby was born, he called her an employee. And I'm like, Brock, you don't even pay for the children you already have. You got a DV charge for, you know, assaulting their mother. And you fled the country because you didn't want to pay for the children you already have. So you don't pay for your children. But yet you want to call Sheena's mother, who was taking care of your daughter, an employee. And who's paying her? Not you, Sheena. So technically, she'd be Sheena's employee because you ain't paying anybody. Sheena's paying you. Sheena's paying you. And remember season nine, I think it was, either season eight or season nine, when Brock and Sheena were so sketchy and they were trying to get Randall to pay for the their big on-camera engagement party and Lala called them out and was like, you want Randall to set everything up, but you didn't give us a credit card. And then they hijacked and Rachel's engagement party and get engaged there. But then they did ended up not doing it because it was going to be so distasteful. And they got in this huge fight. Remember that? And it all came out and how Sheena was giving him money. Like, I think Brock gives her hell behind the scenes. That's why she lost all that weight and she's taking, she's popping all these pills and she's all over the place. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Like if you need medicine, take your medicine. If you need help, get the help. I don't mean it in that type of way. I'm saying that when you are married to someone who is stressing you the hell out, you're going to see the symptoms of that stress. Do I think it, a lot of the stress came from the restraining order? Yes. Do I think that's the only cause of Sheena's stress? No, I think Brock, gives her hell. I don't think he really helps that much. I think that he, I don't know. She just seems very on edge. The fact that she literally said on camera, one of the reasons why she's taking Zola off is that she's worried that Brock is going to cheat on her with Lala. She said that on the cam on the show. That right there shows you where she is at in her marriage with him. You know? And I, I don't ever, I don't know. He just seems, I think he, I think he puts on a good front. But I think like any snake, they always shed their skin. And like any person who's wearing a mask, it always slips. I think he gives her hell. And I don't really, and I think they're going to have a lot of problems in their marriage. That's just what I think. Um, What else is going on, you guys? Oh, let's talk about Tom Sandoval. So apparently Tom Sandoval has a new girlfriend, but is this real or is this another PR relationships relationship? Let's dive right on in. So this is according to bravotv.com. It says Tom Sandoval shares a kiss with a new flame. Did Tom just share major news about his love life? Get the details. So Tom Sandoval's love life has been a frequent topic of conversation since news broke in 2023 that his relationship with Ariana Maddox had come to an end after nine years of dating. The Vanderpump Rules cast member has sparked some dating rumors following his split, but did he just launch a new relationship on his Instagram stories? Find out who Tom Sandoval has been cozying up to as of late and see photos of the two together. So who is he dating? Just a day after season 11 premiered on January 30th, Sandoval spent some time at the bar he co owns at Tom Shorts, aka Shorts and Sandys. Sandoval posted a video on his Instagram stories featuring him dancing with a few friends at the bar while music played along in the background. He tagged model Victoria Lee Robinson in the post, though there were others featured in the video as well. 
However, at the end of the story, Victoria embraces Sandoval and she gives him a kiss on the cheek. Victoria also posted a photo of her sitting side by side with Tom Sandoval and the most extras frontman on her page. She is wearing a striped short sleeve t-shirt in the photo, while Sandoval has on a dark tee and a multicolored beaded necklace. Victoria tagged Sandoval in the story, and Sandoval reposted the photos on his own Instagram page. Sandoval has yet to publicly share whether the two are an item or not. Mm -mm -mm. So he says he's ready for a relationship. Shortly before Sandoval shared some PDA with Victoria, he appeared on the Vile Files podcast to discuss all things Vanderpump Rules. In addition to talking about season 11, Sandoval and fellow guest Tom Shorts opened up about the latest in their respective dating lives. While Shorts noted that he doesn't want Tom Sandoval to set him up, Sandoval revealed that he is open to finding love. Am I ready to protect somebody's heart, Sandoval said on the cast? Is the thing. I think this is completely fake. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. So this chick, Victoria Lee Robinson, she's a model and she used to date Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, the reason why I think this is a PR relationship is a couple of things. Number one, Leonardo DiCaprio is notorious for having PR relationships. So anybody that he's been attached to, what like Leonardo DiCaprio is big on PR relationships. Bradley Cooper is also huge on PR relationships. Um, and who else? Like those kind of like rat packy Hollywood guys, huge on it, huge. So anybody who's been linked to Leonardo DiCaprio, you can pretty much guarantee has been a team, and by team, I mean like their PR team, their agents team setups. So if she dated him back in 2016, then she's clearly game for these type of come up relationships. You see what I'm saying? So to me, that's a red flag. Maybe it's real, you know, I don't know. Maybe they met somewhere, I don't know. But it's just a red flag to me that she has been linked to Leonardo DiCaprio. Because Leonardo DiCaprio also used to date Gigi Hadid. And Gigi Hadid is now dating Bradley Cooper, right? And they go public all of a sudden now that it's award season, Oscar season. These type of celebrity forever bachelors, also George Clooney used to have a lot of those too. These sort of like forever bachelor guys, you know, until they get like in their 60s, like a George Clooney finally marry somebody or whatever. But these sort of like forever bachelor A-list guys, Anytime they have a new project coming out or anytime they have like award season, just in the society we live in, you know, conservative or liberal or not, just the undercurrent of our consciousness as a symbol lights when they are in a relationship or a marriage. Just it's just how it is. So that's why usually when these guys also um, Chris Evans used to be like that, too. But then all of a sudden he married this really, really young girl. But that's for a whole nother episode. Um, but if you just do a little bit of a digging, all of those types of guys, they're usually always single until they have a project or award season. I called it with Kyle and Morgan. I'm calling it with this. Tom, even in this photo, looks doesn't even look like he believes it. Look at his face. He doesn't even look like he believes it. I think this is reputation rehab. I think that Tom Sandoval probably knows this might be the last season of Vanderpump Rules or pretty much coming up upon that. He wants more, um, you know, gigs. He wants to, you know, rehab his reputation. He went on the Vile Files. And then we'll do a breakdown of his whole interview on that. But he went on the Vile Files just being a big weirdo and, you know, all of that stuff, still blaming everybody but himself for his situation. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he does sort of want to rehab his reputation. And then this model chick, I mean, if it was 2016, which at this point was seven years ago, she dated Leonardo DiCaprio, we haven't heard anything from her since. I'm pretty sure she probably wants a bump back into the spotlight because now we're talking about her. Now we know who she is. Like we wouldn't know who this person was if it was not for her tagging and talking about him in the photos. So I think this is PR. Are they smashing? Yeah, maybe because it's fun. But I don't think that they met organically. 
and started a relationship. I think it was one of those things where her agents probably wanted to see if they could get her back in the spotlight since she's been out of it for seven years. And I think that he wanted to be seen within a quote, healthy relationship with a cool girl and, you know, rehab his reputation because I bet he wants to get into acting more. I bet he wants to get into more music, maybe more spinoffs and all of that stuff. And he knows he needs to change his reputation in order to have that happen. So am I buying this relationship? No, because it doesn't look real. He looks like uncomfortable. She looks uncomfortable. Also, timing. Is it a coincidence? I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in conspiracy. Go grab a, a t-shirt down below. Also, I don't think it's a coincidence that they choose to go public and tag each other the day of the premiere of, of, epi of, the, of the first episode of season 11. You know, I don't think that relationship timelines are that, you know, convenient that all of a sudden they decided to go public literally the day of their premiere. Usually that's very like timing, that's marketing, that's advertising, you know? So do I believe that? So do I believe it? No. <laughs> I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below, you know. Do you think he's in a real relationship with this woman? She's beautiful. I will give her that. She's gorgeous, you know. She really is. And hey, if you could hook up with Leonardo DiCaprio, I would. I would hook up with Leonardo DiCaprio, Bradley Cooper, Chris Evans. Like, yeah. I mean, don't tell my partner, but yeah, I totally would. So, girl, get it. I would not hook up with Tom Sandoval. But if she hasn't worked in seven years, she might have to do what she has to do. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So she might have to do what she has to do. So put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. So with that, let's take some of your candy cane questions and comments. And I'm going to drop the link in case anybody wants to come up and chat with me. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. And then I did watch Beverly Hills. And I do want to do a recap of Beverly Hills because I have some good stuff I want to talk about with that. And to. But let's take some of your candy canes questions and comments. Hey, Chocolate Chunks. Chocolate Chunk says, oh, can you guys see it? Wait one second. Hey, Natoski. Chocolate Chunk says, hey,